What's going on guys? This is your boy C. Will back to you with another video. Man, I'm super excited with what we have here today. Why? Because I will be installing the 32 gigabyte kit that I just purchased uh, from Kingston. It's the Hyper Fury X and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the goodies that we could be able to get out of that. And, you know, I do a lot of video editing and things of that nature. So it takes up a lot of memory. But I'm super excited because if you look on the Dell forms and stuff like that, um, there's a lot going on about different compatibility issues with the motherboard and memory. So, hey, we're going to figure that out today and definitely see if we could be able to use all these sticks of memory that we have and all four slots. So grab some popcorn, grab some other stuff, some drink, and let's get into this video. All right, guys, so we got the Alienware Aurora R7 right here today. Currently, it has 16 gigabytes worth of DDR4 memory that came with it uh, pre-built in. Um, but we have picked up the Kensington. 32 gigabyte HyperX Fury memory kit. And uh, man, I've been searching all over the forums. Uh, been doing a lot of reading, looking at, uh, of course, you know, anybody who has a uh, Alienware computer um, knows if you want to do any type of upgrades or mods, uh, you definitely have to check the compatibility of all of the parts that you're going to be getting. From what I read all over the forums over the internet, this particular kit is supposed to be the most compatible. Um, and that it works great. So 1.2 volts, 32 gigabyte kit. It's uh, 2666 uh, hertz. And I'm definitely looking forward to checking this out. Uh, the first thing that we're gonna do first is actually, we're gonna go ahead and get the case taken off. And then we're gonna go ahead and figure out whether or not we could be able to use all four sockets on the motherboard. Because I have also read that uh, you can't use all four sockets. So I'm gonna see if we could be able to add this with the current 16 gigabyte worth of memory that we already have. And let's just see what happens. Go ahead, shut the computer down. So also with shutting the computer down, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the power cable. You see here, uh, it's on the one screw on the back. So we're gonna take that screw off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this. Take the side mount just like that. What we need to do is we need to go ahead and pop the latches in the back. And then just swing the power supply cage open. So here uh, we have the two sticks of DDR4 memory. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and see if I add it in this kit. And again, so let's go ahead and pop this, pop that one. And there's another one that's in the middle here. Let's go ahead and pop that. And let's pop that one. Let's zoom out just a little bit. All right, so we got the first stick here. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this in. And this should just snap in. You shouldn't have to force anything. All right, so we got the first stick in. And again, um, I've read that, uh, so these of course are the two eight gigabyte sticks. This is a 16 gigabyte stick. I also heard that the two slots that are open were kind of meant for 16 gigabyte uh, sticks, but there's so much, um, <laughs> that's going around the net you really don't know exactly for sure until you actually do it yourself but hey that's what we're doing here so we're gonna go ahead and pop in this other stick here all right so everything looks to be popped in and yeah, we're gonna go ahead and try to boot the system so let's close this and I'm not gonna put the side back on just yet because I wanna see if the system is gonna post and boot up into Windows. And if so, then we will have successfully added an additional 32 gigabytes worth of memory on top of the 16 gigabytes that we already have. So let's just kinda see what happens. This is some good news, I believe. All right, so it says here Alienware World R7 system bios 1.0.17 um bill says the amount of system memory has changed if you did not change your memory to resolve this issue receive the memory so what we want to do let's uh down here at the bottom i can either continue i could go to bios setup or diagnosis so let's go to bios setup 
Okay, I'm going over here to system memory. And over on system memory, it says 49152 megabytes DDR4. It also says memory speed 2400 megahertz. So not for sure exactly what's going on with the memory speed there, but it is recognizing almost, you know, the 50 gigabytes worth of uh, installed memory. So that's 16 on top of the 32, uh, which was really 48. Okay, so we're gonna click on advance over here. And then we're gonna go to performance options. Uh, the XMP memory is disabled, so I can't do anything with that if you've ever seen that before. So let's just go ahead and hit save exit. And then we're gonna see if we can boot into Windows. Okay, so the Alienware popped up. All right guys, so <laughs> it got to Windows. So we are currently inside Windows. Let's see, CPU ID. All right, so we inside CPU ID, let's click on memory. And it shows 48 gigabytes worth of memory. Wow. I'm also showing the cache latency is at 17. I believe last time I was looking at this, this was at 19, so that's pretty good. I know the cache latency on the, on the Hyperfair X memory I bought uh, actually goes down to 16. Um, so this is pretty good. It actually uh, brings itself to 17 clocks instead of the 19 that was on the original memory. The part that I'm a little bit concerned about is the, you see the drown frequency it says, like around about 1200 and it gave me for dual channels 2400 um, it actually brought that down it was um, at 1333 so I have more memory but it's a little bit slower and I'm not for sure exactly the reason why that is um, but what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and do a restart and let's see what happens All right, so we're gonna restart the computer just to make sure that this is not a fluke uh, because again um, I read that you can't have all four slots filled on the motherboard uh, for some particular reason. Uh, the reason why behind that, I have no idea, um, but we are definitely testing this out. Um, if I could be able to have all slots filled and have a little bit slower memory, uh, I would probably take that over just being stuck with just 32 and the system rebooted fine and again i am going to go back to i'm going to go back to the cpu id and let's take a look again and from what i'm showing here yep 48 gigabytes worth of memory so it looks like we have a successful install it's recognizing 48 gigabytes worth of the memory and it also shows here um, the speed is 2400 megahertz it really is supposed to be 2666 um, and then we have, uh, you know, slots 404. So it's recognizing memory. I am super excited about that um, because I've heard that for some particular reason, this can't really happen. Um, but I am going to swap uh, the actual sticks. I'm gonna swap the slots to see if that makes a difference on uh, the speed of the memory. Uh, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys, so um, like I said, we was able to successfully install all four sticks. Well, the two sticks I just purchased today, all four are working. Uh, we saw that on the video there, um, but uh, I'm not for sure the exact reason why it's running at 2400 megahertz instead of the 2666 uh, that um, all four uh, DIMMs are capable of. So uh, what I wanna test out now is actually swapping um, the slots that these are in. So we're gonna put the HyperX in the eight gigabyte slots and we're gonna put the eight gigabyte slots in the HyperX slots, if that makes sense. Quick, whoo, did you see that? Man, talking about saving the day. <laughs> If you could see that there but these are Kingston memory slots as you can see here so these are made from Kingston so that's good that may have something to do with why it works well together with the other Kingston that I just purchased mm -hmm. 
Alright, so we successfully got the swapped out. Let's see if this boots and post and let's see if we get the same memory speed. Alright. Okay, so Alienware is popping up on the screen here. So that's a good thing. Oh, and we booted into Windows. So let's just see what happens here. Alright, now we are in Windows. I just swapped out the uh, the sticks of RAM just to see if we still get the same uh, speed. So let's just go to task manager here. And if we go to performance, so even though we swapped out the sticks uh, to put them in different slots, uh, we're still showing the 2400 megahertz here um, and slash use for four down factor. So, hey, uh, so swapping out uh, the actual sticks don't make a huge difference. Uh, and that's cool. Uh, so what we'll do, uh, we'll actually go ahead and I am going to take out the 16 gigabytes worth of memory and we're just going to have just a 32 gigabytes worth of memory. Um, and then uh, we'll see if we get some different information here. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll run a benchmark uh, with just the 32 gigabytes worth of memory just to see if it makes a difference. Um, and then we'll run a benchmark for the uh, having all four uh, sticks of memory in. So we'll take a look at that and uh, I'll get back to you. All right, guys, we are back into Windows. I took out the 16 gigabytes worth of memory. I only left it just for the 32 gigabytes. And I have run a PC user benchmark. And as you can see, uh, the memory is running at the 2660 hertz, uh, 2666 hertz. And you can look at the gaming, the desktop, the workstation numbers. And as you can see, uh, with the 32 gigs, it runs pretty good. Um, i7-8700, the GTX 1070, um, these are all the hard drives that you're looking at here. Uh, everything is running pretty good. Uh, the numbers are looking good. And as you can see, uh, coming up here on the Kingston memory, um, it shows the numbers. Um, it's running like it's supposed to run. Uh, so again, I'm not for sure exactly why um, it was running at the 2400 megahertz with all four sticks. From what I see here, uh, things are looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the other two sticks of memory back in and uh, we'll see what numbers that we get on the same benchmark. Run a benchmark uh, just with all four sticks of DDR4 memory in, the original plus the HyperX Fury. And as you can see here, um, it has for gaming, 107% um, and this is the PC user benchmark. So it's running at a UFO. Desktop, 146% UFO. Um, workstation, 122% UFO. And, um, and it seems like it's doing pretty good. And actually, um, these look like they were similar scores to um, what was ran just with the 32 gigabyte um, worth of DDR4 memory I just purchased the Hyper Fury X. Um, so with this being said, you know, just on the benchmark um, and it lists all of the memory here, 80.9%, uh, uh, excellent. So uh, yeah, um, I would definitely be keeping all four sticks of memory in um, hit me up with questions down in the comments. So as you can see here, I'm not for sure exactly why um, it's running at 2400 megahertz. I don't know if it's because all, the, all four slots are full or uh, it may have something to deal with. All four sticks of memory are not the same. Uh, they're made from the same manufacturer, Kingston, um, but uh, they're not the same exact sticks. So later on in the future, I definitely see if I can sell my two eight gigabyte sticks and Just purchase the same Hyper Fury X sticks that I just got to see if they could all run at the same You know at the advertised speed of the uh, 2666 megahertz, but for right now uh, system is running great and uh, Let me know uh, You know if you run across this if you're able to use all four sticks of a memory for yourself and uh, 
Yeah, definitely. Um, it seems like it's running pretty good. All right, guys, man, that was amazing. Okay, first of all, we was able to use the 16 gigabytes worth of memory that came with the system. Also, the 32 gigs that I just purchased of the Hyper Fury X, and it works in all the slots. So, I'm not for sure, again, I'm not for sure exactly what happened. Um, but um, again, you know, we read on the forums that you couldn't use all four slots and that, you know, different slots would take different gigabytes and things of that nature. But hey, we saw that it worked. Um, again, I don't necessarily see it as a downside, but we had 2400 megahertz on the memory speed. And I'm okay with that because, and as you can see, we really didn't run into any performance issues. So hey, I'll take the 48 gigabytes worth of memory and the 2400 megahertz versus the 32 gigabytes worth of memory and the 2600 megahertz. So until I see something different, I'm sticking with the 48. So hey guys, let me know down in the comments what you think. Uh, some things that, you know, that could possibly explain why it dropped down in the actual megahertz or if it even matters. Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.